Happy Monday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. I hope you had a great weekend. Good news for us. We've made it to another week, less than a week away from the fall season and still no tropical systems impacting us or heading our way for now. We are about a week past the peak of hurricane season, which was around September 10th, but we are still looking good here in Southeast Texas, but we do have a big hurricane out in the Atlantic. So I do want to talk about that and update you on any other potential systems systems that may get going as we go through this new work week. So first, let's talk about our tropical climatology. And as I mentioned, we are past the peak of hurricane season. This year is flying by. This hurricane season seems like it's flying by that peak around September 10th. So we've got a little bit more to get through in September. Then we've got all of October and all of November. But notice that the risk for those tropical cyclones, hurricanes, tropical storms, starting to go down as we go through the rest of our hurricane season. So we are still in a period where things could quickly pop up and get very active out there. But every day, every week that we get through, without any activity heading our way is a good thing. But we do have a hurricane out in the central Atlantic and I do wanna talk about that one. This is the system we were monitoring last week and we thought it had a very good shot to become a tropical storm or a hurricane this week and it has done just that. This is Hurricane Nigel out in the central Atlantic. It is getting more organized. It is gonna be in an environment that will allow it to likely strengthen very quickly. We still have very warm, ocean waters out there, not much in the upper levels to kind of tear it apart or rip it apart. So as it pushes northwest, it will likely rapidly strengthen over the next 24 to 36 hours. In fact, over the next day or so, it is forecast to become a major category three hurricane out there in the Atlantic. So here it is, there's Bermuda off to the north and west. Hurricane Nigel with maximum sustained winds around 80 miles per hour. And we do have that movement to the northwest at 12 miles per hour at this point, pressure at 982 millibars. This is as of the latest 4 p.m. advisory. You can see the dark colors there. It is getting more organized. It's got a lot of showers and storms, all of that convection swirling around that center of circulation. No well-defined eye just yet, but I do anticipate that to happen by this time tomorrow. So here is the official track for Nigel at this point. As I mentioned, it is going to rapidly intensify by 1 p.m. tomorrow, likely a category two, a strong category two hurricane with 105 mile per hour winds. It will be passing to the east of Bermuda late Tuesday into early Wednesday and it likely will still be either a strong cat two or a minimal cat three hurricane. So it is gonna be around 110 miles per hour by Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. So we do expect this system to still strengthen, be fairly impressive. This latest advisory, basically having it a little weaker than the previous advisory, but it is still expected to be a fairly powerful hurricane. But I do think it will pass far enough east of Bermuda where they're not expecting any major impacts. So at this point, no tropical storm watches or warnings out for the Bermuda area. As we go through the rest of the work week, Thursday afternoon down to 85 mile per hour winds. So that would put it at a category one hurricane. And by this weekend, it will start to move farther north into those colder waters. So it's hard for these tropical systems to survive in that cooler water. So therefore it should start to lose tropical characteristics, but it's still going to pack some pretty strong wind even by Friday and Saturday, 60 to 70 mile per hour wind still expected. And whatever is left of Nigel at that point, it would likely be post tropical cyclone Nigel. That's exactly what we have with Lee and Margo at this point, post-tropical Lee, which of course made landfall over the weekend in Nova Scotia, bringing some heavy rain and some strong wind and also some impacts to parts of New England. So that is post-tropical and kind of falling apart. We do have post-tropical Margo still out in the central Atlantic. That one is weakening and falling apart as well. And then we do have tropical storm Nigel, which is now hurricane Nigel, and that hurricane will likely continue to strengthen. So we do have those systems. Two of them are kind of on their final stages, but of course, Nigel is now up to a hurricane, a category one hurricane and likely a category two or category three hurricane by tomorrow. As far as other systems, the National Hurricane Center is monitoring an area right off of the Florida 
Coast and the coast of the Carolinas for possible development. Nothing really going on right now, but they're expecting a non-tropical area of low pressure to form over the next few days, and it could eventually acquire some subtropical characteristics over the next two to seven days. And that means that we could have another named system right off, right off the southeastern U.S. coast. So the chance for that happening over the next 48 hours around 0%, the chance for that happening over the next seven days around 30%. So whether it's subtropical or tropical, it could still bring some impacts to portions of the southeastern U.S. coast around Florida, the Carolinas, other parts of the mid-Atlantic. So certainly something for us to watch. But at this point, at least for the next couple of days, no chance for development at 0%. But over the next week, things could get interesting right off of the U.S. coast. So we'll have to watch that area closely. We also have another potential tropical wave that we are expecting to roll off of the west coast of Africa over the next couple of days. And this wave will push into the eastern Atlantic and it's going to have a high shot for development over the next week. No chance to form over the next 48 hours, but a high 70% chance for development over the next seven days. So it's this area of concern shaded in red. That's where we're expecting this possible development and it is going to be pushing off to the west. So this one could be our next name storm and the next name on the list would be Ophelia. So this could be Ophelia by the end of the week. If not by the end of the week, early next week, we'll have to monitor it closely, but it definitely looks like it has a high shot for development and it is developing pretty far to the south. So we can't rule out that one possibly making it into the Caribbean and possibly into the Gulf. Of course, that would be likely more than a week away, but something to monitor. All right, let's track Hurricane Nigel with our European model. Right now it is off to the south and east of Bermuda. It is going to maintain that hurricane status and it will likely intensify big time over the next 24 to 36 hours. Notice it brushing to the east of Bermuda by the middle of the week on Wednesday. Then it's going to race off to the north and east. It should bypass the U.S. It should miss Canada, that is good news. So it should stay over the open water as it gradually starts to lose those tropical characteristics as we go into this weekend. So I don't expect many impacts from Hurricane Nigel, but I do want to move back down to that potential area of tropical cyclone development that we're expecting, that tropical wave that should come off of the west coast of Africa by the middle of the week. And this is what that will likely look like by Saturday. It will likely be come more developed and strengthen a bit as it pushes west and we do have the potential for that to be Ophelia by the end of the week into the weekend so we're going to be monitoring things closely an update on what we've had so far for this hurricane season with Nigel becoming a name storm of course at a hurricane we now have 15 name storms six hurricanes and three major hurricanes so that puts us above average for our name storms for this season and it also puts us right around average for major hurricanes and close to average for hurricanes but remember we've still got to get through all of september all of october and all of november so we've still got about two and a half months left in our hurricane season so this will most likely go down as an above normal above average hurricane season all right, let's take a quick peek at the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, and this is the way we like to see it. When we're right around the peak of hurricane season, this is when things could really be super active, but they are very quiet across the Gulf and very quiet as well across the Caribbean. So we are thankful that nothing is heading our way. We don't see any signs that anything is gonna pop up at least for the next week or so. Temperatures, though, I want to remind you, are still extremely warm. Those waters of the Gulf and the Caribbean still in the 80s to low 90s. Look at that buoy temperature reading of 90 degrees right off of the Gulf Coast, south of the Mississippi area. Definitely some super warm water. So, of course, that water acts as fuel for these systems to develop. So I'm glad we don't have anything in the Gulf because it likely would strengthen quickly. Also, very warm water still across a big chunk of the Atlantic, the Caribbean, most spots sitting in the 80s. So that's why we are concerned that we could still have more action on the way, more of these systems becoming named storms, potential tropical storms and or hurricanes. We have now been 
through the first two columns of names for the 2023 hurricane season. Of course, starting off with Arlene. It seems like that was just yesterday, but now we've gone through Arlene all the way down to Gert, up to Harold, now all the way down to Nigel. And that next name on the list would be Ophelia and then Philippe. And then we've got even more after that. So hopefully we don't have to use all of these names. We're hoping the remainder of the hurricane season is a fairly quiet one. However, when you have water out there that warm, you definitely have to keep your fingers crossed that nothing will happen, but you have to stay alert because things could certainly form quickly. So of course, keep it here. We'll continue to update you every afternoon as long as we are in our hurricane season, which lasts through the end of November. And of course, make sure to download our Fox 26 weather app, the latest tropical weather updates, our follow me feature forecast cones, and of course, the latest advisories, watches, warnings from the tropics and the latest advisories, alerts, watches and warnings for your local weather as well. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade.